Hello, family. Thank you for joining me again to study God's Word together today. I just want to take a few minutes to dive into God's Word and look at the life of Christ as we continue our study together. Um, go ahead and grab your Bible, grab some pen, grab a paper, and let's dive in. Let's uh, learn and come to know who Jesus is as our Messiah, as our Lord and our Savior a little bit more. Let's understand more about Him um, and who He was. Who, who is your favorite teacher? Um, you know, you've had lots of teachers in your life, and you probably have some that you didn't care much for, and you probably have some that you cared a lot about um, because they were such good teachers. Who was that for you? I'm mindful of my kindergarten teacher, right? Uh, all the way back a long time ago, I remember Miss Reynolds. Uh, Miss Reynolds meant and still means a lot to me in my life. And, you know, to be honest with you, which I always am honest with you. I don't really remember a whole lot that I learned in kindergarten, though I'm sure I used the things I learned uh, day in and day out. But she was my favorite teacher and the best teacher because I knew she cared about me. You know, you could probably think of somebody right now that's your favorite teacher, and they might be making learning engaging and fun, uh, might be bringing new techniques and new ways for you to engage with the material you're learning whether from primary school and same with me throughout middle school and high school and even in my college years. I've had teachers that I loved uh, the way they taught me. But the most important thing that I found that made a teacher so good wasn't necessarily how well they taught, but how much I knew they cared about me. Today, as we dive into our lesson, as we think about who these people are that are our favorite teachers that, that have shaped and molded our life, we get to focus on the greatest teacher ever, the, the best teacher. And not only is the content in which he teach, teaches the best content to learn and to focus on that, that gives us life here, but also life everlasting that brings us into a new life with God the Father. Jesus also is the best teacher because he cared. He really cared about you, about me, about those he interacted with while he was on this earth. So as we look at this lesson together, I want to remind you of who we're talking about here. Jesus, the very Son of God, God Himself taking on flesh, who came to teach a lost world the way, the truth, and the life. Open up your Bible to Mark chapter 1, as that's where we're going to be focusing this morning. I want to remind you, last week we left off, Jesus turned water into wine. He performed His first public miracle. He performed his first sign uh, that proved his deity to his followers and to others that might have seen it, uh, that might have known what happened. Uh, and he wasn't uh, very, he's never showboaty, but he didn't uh, show off this uh, miracle. He didn't go around and say, hey, did everybody notice what I just did? Just those that saw, he's very humble. And everything about Jesus is humble. But today we get to see Jesus start teaching in his public ministry in Capernaum. So open up to Mark chapter 1 and let's read the text together. Mark 1 starting in verse 21. It reads this, And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Look at verse 25. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This morning as we look at this text, I just want to walk through it. and I want to pull, pull up and point out a couple questions and, and get us thinking about some things and then take away uh, some application points, some lessons that we can learn from this text. Uh, but let's zoom in and focus on verses 21 and 22 together. The first thing I want for us to think about is why did he go to a synagogue? Why does Jesus go to this synagogue on the Sabbath day? I want to remind you that Jesus is a Jew. Jesus is a Jew, so obviously they're going to go and they're going to worship on the Sabbath day. They're, they're going to go and, and teach and learn and grow from each other. And 
But here's the different thing about Jesus going to the synagogue. Is that Jesus is also considered a rabbi. Jesus is also considered a rabbi. Uh, Verse 22, it says, They were astonished at His teaching. He taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. Uh, Here we see this big word, and this is going to come up a lot throughout our study, is that people were astonished or amazed at what Jesus was able to do and what He was doing. And the first thing that they're astonished at is His teaching. Why does He go to the synagogue first? Is it maybe because he's going to the religious people who have been crying out for hundreds of years, where is our Messiah, that are still to this day the Jewish people are wondering where the Messiah is and waiting for him whenever he's already came? He goes to the religious people. He says, I'm here. I am here. The the Redeemer, the Savior. We see um, in other gospel accounts whenever Jesus goes, specifically to the synagogue in Nazareth, we see him talking about that, that he is the one who has came to give sight to the blind, that he has came to free the oppressed. He starts fulfilling these prophets. He opened up the Isaiah scroll and, and he read it before their presence. And he said, today this prophecy has been fulfilled. Man, what a marvelous thing to consider that the Messiah is present. And he's trying to help them understand, here I am. Let's move forward. Let's, let's live on this mission together. Come and learn from me. And they're astonished at his teaching it's also important for us to understand that Jesus is a teacher. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our Messiah. But Jesus is a teacher. He's the greatest teacher ever. Scripture refers to Jesus as rabbi, as teacher. Rabbi means teacher. Um, Look at a couple verses with me. Mark chapter 9. Mark 9 and verse 5. Flip over there with me. Mark 9 and verse 5 says this, And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Here we see uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus is called Rabbi by Peter. Um, Also a couple other verses that say the same thing, 11 and 21, uh, 14 and 45. John chapter 1 and verse 49. Jesus is a teacher. It's important for us to listen wherever the teacher teaches. Because these people who had heard religious teaching all of their life heard what Jesus said and they were amazed. Why were they amazed? Because He taught them, look at this, He taught them as one who had authority. See, the scribes and uh, the Pharisees, those that were religious teachers of their day, they would share uh, their understanding of the Scriptures, kind of like me, kind of like Stan, Jeremy, Derek, um, your teachers in Bible class. What we do is, is we see the Word of God and we study it and we interpret it. We try to uh, bring it into an understanding that we can learn and grow from. But I don't teach you from my own authority. I don't say, Ben says you need to love your neighbor. Uh, Ben says you need to pray for those who persecute you. I say, God teaches us this, therefore we should do it. But Jesus came, not as the scribes and the the Pharisees saying, you should do this because this is what God expects of us. He says, do it. Do it. It's a different teaching. It's one that people listen to. And to them, it's a new teaching. It's the way, the truth, and the life. People were astonished at Jesus, the teacher. Are you astonished at Jesus the teacher? Um, Are you amazed by what He's able to bring into your life, what He's able to offer you through His teaching? Do you understand that He cares about you? Do you understand that He loves you? Because whenever we understand those things, it helps this teaching come to life even more in our life. Let's go on together as, as we continue thinking about this. Because they weren't just astonished at His teaching. They were also astonished at what He could do that He was able to change lives before their very eyes. Notice verses 23 through 26. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed. So they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching with authority? 
He commands even the unclean spirits that they obey Him. And at once, His fame spread out everywhere throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. You see what just happened here? They weren't just astonished because He was teaching them something new and He had authority, which uh, Jesus has authority. We can see that in Colossians 2 and 10 and Ephesians 1 and 21 that, that God has given Jesus all authority. And Jesus says that Himself in Matthew 28, 18 through 20 that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus has authority to tell us what to do with our life because He is God Himself. He has overcome the grave for us. But He also changes people's lives whenever they listen. But who listens here? Who knows who Jesus is? It's an unclean spirit. It's a demon. It's a demon. There's people who have a lot of letters behind their names and in front of their names, PhDs, uh, scholars, that are trying to figure out who this Jesus guy is. Oh, was he just some great guy that lived? Was he a prophet? Was he actually the son of God? And a lot of people in the world reject the deity of Christ. But you know who never rejects that Jesus is the Son of God? Demons. Demons. Every time Jesus is in front of the presence of a demon or a demon is in front of the presence of the Holy Son of God, they always know who He is. They say without question, You are the Holy One of God. Demons know who Jesus is is. It's simple. It's not hard for them. And they know that He has power over them. Do you know who Jesus is? Do you believe in Him? Turn over to James chapter 2. I want to look at this with you. James chapter 2. James is right after the book of Hebrews. James chapter 2. Look at verse 19. It reads this, You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe, and they shudder. Do you understand what James is saying there? That verse is within the context of faith without works is dead. That you can't just say you believe, but you have to work upon your belief. You have to show through your actions that you truly believe there is a God and that Jesus is His Son. He's saying demons believe. Demons, whenever they come before the presence of God, they know they're in His presence. They believe in Jesus and they believe in His power. But they're unwilling to do anything about it. They're unwilling to quit their evil works. Us, as children of God, or those that are seeking God, seeking the Messiah, whenever we come before the presence of God, do we know who He is? Do we believe in Him? And are we willing to act upon that belief? It astonished the crowd because He was able to change lives. And then this news of Jesus' authority and His power and His teaching spread throughout all the regions of Galilee. He became famous because people saw in Him that He's different, that He cares about people and that He changes lives for God's glory. Man, what a powerful thing. What a powerful, powerful thing. So what are some lessons that we can learn from the life of Christ here in this story? That we see Jesus having authority, that He's the greatest teacher, that He's compassionate, that He cares, but most importantly, He's here to change lives. He's here to bring people into a new life. The first thing that we can learn here is that Jesus' teachings are unprecedented. You know, you've heard that word a whole lot recently. These are unprecedented times. They're like none that have ever happened before. Well, see, there's been plagues before. There's been uh, other diseases before. There's been uh, flus and things that have uh, caused the world to be in a situation we're kind of in right now. Though we've never lived in it before, things like that have happened. The world had never seen the Son of God before, and they had never heard His teachings before. Jesus' teachings were truly unprecedented. There'd never been anything like it before. There's never been anything like it after. The very world history that we find ourselves in today is defined by the very birth of Jesus Christ. Isn't that cool? Whenever Jesus teaches, we need to make sure we listen. Second lesson is Jesus taught with authority. You know, who has the most authority in your life right now? 
I would think it's safe to say that probably your parents, right? Whatever your parents tell you to do, you do it. Why? Because they're your parents. I know that's not something we like uh, to say a lot. It's not something that really satisfies whenever we ask why we should do something and your parents say, because I'm your parent. Uh, It's not really satisfying to answer that question. But in all reality, it's the truth. It, It is the only justification that they need to tell you to do something. Whenever it comes to Jesus and Him teaching us and telling us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us, whenever He's telling us that we shouldn't uh, repay um, evil for evil, but we should go the extra mile, whenever He's challenging us to go against the flow, to go against what the world would tell us, and we say, why? He has the authority to tell us to do those things without explanation. But He does explain Because he says, I have came to give them life, abundant life. Jesus wants us to live the best life that there is available to live on this earth. And not just live the best available life on this earth, but in the life to come. In the life to come. To live in heaven with God. There is a heaven. There is a hell. Man, and Jesus is coming. He has taught so that we can find everlasting life. Okay, lesson three. Jesus' words have power. Jesus says to this unclean spirit and this man to come out. The spirit recognizes that he is the Son of God, that he's before the Son of God. And whenever Jesus says, come out, the, the spirit has no power anymore. Whenever Jesus speaks in our life and gives us promises, those promises, his words, have power. They have power. They're not empty words Has anyone ever given you an empty promise? They told you they would do something but never fell through with it? Never followed through with it? Excuse me. That's not Jesus. Jesus promises and He provides the power to back up what He said. Lesson four is that demons believe. Demons believe. Why is this important? It's because we live in a world where people are trying to figure out what they believe about God, about Jesus, about uh, this whole spirituality, uh, about the religious world. People are trying to figure out where they fit into this. And they don't know if they want to buy in. You might be trying to figure out if you want to buy in. Why is this important? Because the evil spirits that are in the world and that were in the world and are in the world today, if they come before the presence of the Son of God, there is no doubt in their mind who He is. There is no doubt. So why, as humans, do we struggle so much to put our faith in a holy God that came to this earth and loved us, gave His life for us, so that we can live our life for Him and live with Him? Demons believe. Can't we believe and act on our belief? Last lesson from this story that I want us to learn together this morning is we have a decision to make. We have a decision to make. It is no longer satisfactory for us to sit around and say, Jesus was a good guy. I'm I'm just here to learn some good life lessons. It's it's time to decide. We've seen enough. We've read enough. We've known enough. It's time to make a decision. Who is Jesus to me? Is he just some good guy? Or is he somebody worth changing my entire life for? This morning, that's my challenge to you. What do you need? What does Jesus need to cast out of your life so that you can be completely bought into him? Jesus came in to this synagogue and an unclean spirit came in And Jesus cast the unclean spirit out of this man, and the man was restored. If you were to rate your spiritual life between 1 and 10, for you to get to a 10, what does Jesus need to cast out? And will you make a decision to allow Him to be Lord in your life? Jesus was a great teacher. He's the best teacher. And I'm thankful that we have Him through His Holy Word, through His Holy Spirit, to teach us today. Thank you for listening today. Let's pray as we close. Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your son, the great teacher. Thank you for the way he taught with authority and the way that he has authority to change lives. Lord, I ask that you would be with each person watching, you would be with their families, you would be with their life situations, but most importantly, you would be with their spiritual life. 
and that you would um, plague their hearts and their souls and that they would give you permission to have the authority that you already have over their life, over my life. Lord, we give everything to you. We're thankful that we have a Savior. We're thankful that you are a Savior and that we can have hope in you. Lord, we love you. Uh, we're thankful for your Son. We're thankful for the way that you give us life each day. We pray these things to you now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen.